Along with trade and tourism, the three amigos will put their heads together to tackle climate change. The White House says the U.S., Canada and Mexico will commit to a new regional clean energy goal this week in Ottawa. They will pledge to source half the continent's energy from renewable sources by 2025. That's a big jump from the current level of 37 percent. The White House calls it an aggressive goal, but achievable. Canada has signaled it is on board. Mike Shorts is the president of Triangle Fluid Controls. Uh, yours is a company that, if indeed this deal goes through, might stand to benefit. What if they come up with this deal? Would this mean for your company? Uh, over deployment of the program, if it's if it's taken quickly, yep. um, we really are going to see realistically twenty percent. Twenty percent. Just depends on how fast it comes. Sure. Through. Yeah. Uh, triangle fluids controls. What what is it you do, and how does that fit into sort of emissions controls in the bigger picture? We ultimately were the were the sealing piece that goes between two metal components. Okay. So without so it could with, be a pipeline. For yeah. Example. Without a soft piece in between the middle, you basically have to weld something together. Okay. So when you weld something together, you can't take it apart. You can't maintain it anymore. So you need a, a sealing piece that goes in between everything. Okay. Um, so, so that, that would keep reduce. it from leaking its source, but it probably also makes things a little bit more efficient along the whole network. So that has less emissions at the sort of the, the end result. Absolutely. Pumps are more efficient. They, they consume less electricity, less energy, uh, and it just helps the entire process. So what, the, the, what is the process? How, how much have you guys known about the process of this deal coming together uh, leading up to the summit? Have you been following this pretty closely? What have people been telling you? We have. We're, we've been playing, uh, paying attention to the, the fugitive emissions component yeah. uh, to what's been happening in North America, but globally, uh, because we are an export primarily an export company. Okay. Uh, so export to the U.S. mostly? Export to the U.S., uh, to South America, okay. um, uh, Asia, Europe, um, kind of everywhere, yeah. essentially. Uh, but what we've been focusing on is this is coming. Yeah. Uh, so we're currently going through an expansion uh, within our facility to gear us up for when things do come out. So then we're prepared for the end users who are ready to make the commitment to get there uh, to these new initiatives that are coming out. It's interesting to see in industries like yours and companies like yours, you know, that before these standards were coming in and the move towards greener, greener energy might not have had a, as good an economic argument to make for your, your products. And as we move forward towards a, you know, a, a place where these are regulations, uh, could your business have existed 10 years ago and will it exist 10 years from now? Are you kind of just in that perfect window right now? The, the opportunity is great right now. Yeah. Um, it's it's always been good because anything with a processed fluid is is where we where we reside. So whether it's the food industry, uh, oil and gas, chemicals, uh, paper, whatever it happens to be. So we've been around. Our company's been around since 1912. 1912. Um, so we've we've we're well established. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, we're well recognized. So that, yeah. I mean that part keeps us going. For sure. And ultimately, you know. What's been put out there uh, that that's led us to this point is the information that the Environmental Defense Fund has created to really show that everything is achievable and yeah. attainable. Yeah. It's just using the technology that's there today and using it the way it's intended. And I, I mean, the graph for the technology is almost a straight yes. line up right now, right? It is, yes, very much so. And is, is that is that trajectory you can expect to continue or will there be a leveling off? In, in like. As we pay more attention to this and companies like yours are, are sort of rolling more and more stuff out to more and more uh, other industries, uh, does that just continue to rise? I think it'll continue to rise and plateau a bit. It okay. would be similar to the, the Clean Air Act. For sure. In the you know, in the, in the, the, you yeah. know way back when, it, you know, things ramped up and, and the Clean Air Act came out. Everything became much better and then we've plateaued a little bit. And now it's kind of ramping up again because we're getting ready for the next wave of, you know, climate issues. Yeah. So 50% of all sort of energy in North America uh, produced by clean sources in 2025. As you knew that was coming, you say it's a, about a 20% bump for your business. Have you already started ramping up or starting sort of reaching out for new relationships? What, what does that look like on the ground? We have. Um, we're, we're going through building expansion, equipment expansion to allow okay. us the capacity uh, to get there to where we want to go. Uh, we've begun to uh, extend our our network of resellers and distributors of our products and uh, growing uh, through a lot of South America in the last couple of years and Europe. Um, and I think what's what 
this news is going to be good is that with Mexico coming on board with all of this and, and freeing up, it's going to give them access to some technology that maybe they weren't completely open to in the past. Huh. And in turn, it's good for the Canadian side because there's a lot of Canadian manufacturers and technology people in that clean energy space because we've been so that. good at it. Well, and where are, are, are we leaders in that? or uh, who, Which country stands to benefit the most from this deal if it goes through? At, at the end of the day, I think Canada really yeah. would benefit the most just because we have probably more experience in developing that clean energy technology. Um, you maybe our scale isn't as big, but sure. just the way our, our kind of climate is, we have to be more efficient in what we do. Uh, you have the uh, the Environment Defense Fund, is that what they're called? Yes. Uh, uh, do they act as sort of a, an, an umbrella group, an industry group that can help you sort of navigate this with government and pass information on about what may or may not be happening? Uh, they do. They help keep us, uh, you know, informed of what's going on and in the policies that are coming up. Um, they're a nonprofit group that that kind of keeps an eye on the environmental piece. And working with them, it, it allows us to, to stay ahead of the game a little bit and, and help the best we can influence uh, these decisions so end users don't see it as being a, a daunting issue to, to yeah. achieve. So you'll be watching pretty close tomorrow? you got a pretty good handle on this. Very already. close. Yeah. yeah, it'll be interesting for All sure. Right. Mike Schwartz, thanks yeah. for coming in. Nice to see you. Thank you.